Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the first lecture of METR 2023 and in this segment we're going to take a look at the gradient operator uh, which is something that we're going to be using quite a bit during the course of this class. So hopefully this will be mostly your view but gradient operator is defined as what's up on the screen here. So uh, you have a partial with respect to x of uh, in the i hat uh, direction or in the zonal direction a partial or in the x direction a partial with respect to y uh, that is then taken in the j hat direction or the meridional direction or the y axis direction and then also a partial with respect to z which is taken on the vertical axis or in the vertical direction and the way that this works is you have say a scalar function and then you take the derivative of that scalar function with respect to x plug that in for this term to get the i hat component of the gradient then you take the derivative with respect to y of that scalar function, and I'll have an illustration of this a little bit later on, but I just want to sort of verbally introduce what's going on here uh, before I get to that. And then you take a derivative of that scalar function with respect to y, then plug that into the j hat component of the gradient vector, and then the take the derivative with respect to z of that scalar function, and then plug that in for the vertical component of the gradient vector. But a few things that should be noted about the gradient vector or the gradient operator itself is this is often used to determine how a scalar quantity changes in three-dimensional space. And you can sort of think of this as being analogous to the slope or rate of change that you probably may or may not remember from your algebra classes, how if you want to determine how quickly something changes or a function changes, then you just simply take a look at the slope of the function. Or uh, if you're in, once you get to calculus, you take a look at the derivative of the function, which is the rate of change. And the gradient operator sort of extends that into a three-dimensional space. So it allows us to determine how quantities are changing in the x, y, and z directions uh, all simultaneously. And one thing that's also very important to note is that the gradient itself is a vector quantity. So it has both magnitude and direction. And by convention, the gradient vector, which is the vector you get by uh, operating on a scalar function, the vector that you get back from that by uh, by definition points from lower values of your scalar function to higher values of your scalar function. So if we take a look at say an example scalar function that involves uh, f here and again I'll highlight it just to signify that this is a scalar function so this this f here highlighted green to signify it's a scalar function. If you want to calculate the gradient of that scalar function which is written as this upside down triangle and then the scalar name of the scalar function goes immediately to the right of that the gradient of that scalar function is defined as the partial derivative of that scalar function with respect to x multiplied by the i hat unit vector plus the partial derivative of that scalar function with respect to y multiplied by the j hat unit vector and then partial derivative with respect to f uh, partial derivative of f with respect to z multiplied by the k hat unit vector and that entire shebang is considered to be the gradient of our scalar function f and again f itself is still a scalar, which means it only has magnitude, it doesn't have direction. The gradient of f, which is highlighted in blue, this entire quantity here, that entire thing is a vector quantity, so it has both magnitude and direction. And to sort of illustrate, uh, give you sort of a conceptual basis on what exactly a gradient looks like, uh, let's consider a temperature gradient, which is what's shown up on the screen here. And uh, this is from some winter, some time ago, if the temperature, this all is in Fahrenheit, by the way. So you can see that we have a temperature field that changes as we go in the x direction, in the zonal direction, and also a temperature field that changes as we go in the y direction, and also in the z direction, but we're going to focus mainly on the xy plane, the x and y directions for now. But you can see as we go in the x direction, we have the temperature, uh, the temperature changes, and also as we go in the y direction, the temperature changes. So that immediately signals that we have a temperature gradient sort because we have a scalar quantity temperature which is varying in the x direction and varying in the y direction and then up here it is quite cold as you can see the temperatures are minus 10 even minus 20 uh, up in the, this lovely uh, the lovely texas and oklahoma panhandle so very low temperatures here very warm temperatures out near the gulf and in the southeast so uh, if we were to draw if we were to draw uh, a temperature gradient vector and lower temperatures over here, higher temperatures over here, by the way the gradient is defined, the vector points from lower values of our scalar quantity to higher values of our scalar quantity. So our gr temperature gradient, given by this symbol here, does in fact point something like this. It points from these lower values of temperature to these higher values of temperature. 
And if we want to take a look at another example that involves surface pressure instead of temperature, focus mainly on this monstrous cyclone that is up in Canada and this uh, high pressure area, which is over, uh, doesn't look like that's too far away from Bermuda, but it's out in the Atlantic. And we can again do the same thing except looking at pressure. So here we've got lower values of pressure centered around this cyclone, this low pressure area, and higher values of pressure over the Atlantic. And if we want to, we can go ahead and label that. And then again, remembering what the definition of the gradient vector is, the gradient points from lower values of our scalar quantity to higher values of our scalar quantity. So in this case, our pressure gradient vector would point from lower values of pressure to higher values of pressure. And also, as just sort of a side note, grades in pressure and grades in temperature are both very, very significant quantities, as we'll see later on. So being able to diagnose those on a map is uh, pretty useful. But this is mostly just to illustrate how exactly a, a gradient would be represented on, say, a map. And you see, as we go in the x and y direction, our pressure changes. And since our pressure changes as we go in the x and y directions, then that tells us that there is a gradient of some sort there, and that gradient does in fact point from lower values of our scalar quantity to higher values of our scalar quantity. So that's going to do it for this particular segment, and the next segment we'll take a look at an exercise that will involve using the notion of a gradient to actually calculate something. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.